What's going on guys? I have heard your calls and I'm here to answer your thirst. You've been waiting for a review of Jean and so we're going to review both of them. Uh, not in the same video, I do want to separate them into different videos just to make this not so long. Uh, but we're gonna start with uh, the Stella Innocent version here, which is the one that came out first, and then just recently the Stella Tears version also came out. So we'll take a look at that second. Let's just take a look at the original one first, and then in the next video we'll take a look at the Stella Tears version, which is uh, probably a version you'll also be quite interested in, I suppose. Uh, but let's go ahead and start with the Stella Tears version. So this is of course from Fantasy Star Online 2 version of Jean. It is a non-scale full action plastic model kit here from Kotobukiya. And we've got some classic Nitty 2D artwork there for the box, which does look very nice. And on the ends of the box, basically kind of the same thing. But we've got some more interesting stuff here to see on the side of the box. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. As you can see, there is just a look at what the kit is going to look like front and back once it's all painted up and also decaled up with some water slide decals I hope are included in here in the box. We'll find out in just a moment once we get it opened up. And then her weapon, which is this uh, kind of bow, double sword looking sort of weapon. I'm not exactly sure what to call that, but it's pretty cool. Never played the game. No familiarity with the source content at all. So sorry about that, guys. And then a look at what the kit looks like completely unpainted, just straight out of the box. It looks pretty good, but of course it could use some of those decals and some detail painting and stuff. And then a look at how you can mix and match this with some different uh, Megami device stuff as well too. So it looks like probably going to be about the same size as a Megami device kit then I suppose, which is slightly smaller than Frame Arms Girl kits. On the opposite side of the box, there's nothing really to see except for the fact that this is 6,000 yen for the list price for this. So 6,000 yen, that definitely puts it in the price range of about this similar to a lot of Megami device kits. Uh, some of them are maybe, you know, give or take a little bit higher, a little bit lower, but about the same price range as those. So if you're into that type of kits, Megami device and Frame Arms Girl type kits, the price is not too surprising for you. So inside here, we're going to have 11 little bags in typical Kotobukiya style with all these little bags of runners. And we do also have some water slides. We'll take a look at those just in a minute. I just wanted to take a look at the instruction manual here first. We've got the same box art here on the front of the manual. And then on the back, just the Fantasy Star Online 2 logo there with some stardust and everything looking very fancy. On the inside here, some shots of the model, so you can get some cool ideas for posing the kit there. And then some more illustration over here on this side. So illustration kind of all around front, back, side, so you can see all about that. And then another illustration down here, Nitty 2 ds comments. So there you go, he's got his, like, his personal comments there, uh, the illustrator for the artwork about the design, I suppose. On the next page here, we have the parts list. So you've got all of that, and then it's just on into the construction with the head and the body and arms and legs and everything, all of that. Making our way to the back is the color and decal guide. So you can see where all the colors go as well as the decals here. It's all laid out in these last couple pages. So there's just some nice big reference images there for you as well. And I won't be using them on the kit for now, but just to show you guys what the water slide decals look like, you got some black and yellow versions of this big marking there, and then some other markings that will go around there for little striping bits and color apps, and then some decals there for the eyes as well, if you want to use those. Here are our pre-painted face options. You've got smiling, winking, and then open mouth, smiling, happy face. So you got some nice expressive faces here for this. We got some pre-painted parts here as well. The hair parts, so you got that stripe of green in her hair and these parts for her outfit as well. You've got the stripe of green on uh, pre-painted on these white parts there also. And then our hands, which do look nicely detailed as they have a little bit more detail on them than typical uh, Megami device or Frame Arms Girl hands. So those are pretty nice. The shape of the hands though is pretty standard. You've got closed fists, open resting hands, open expressive hands, trigger finger hands, and holding hands. Runner A here is in this light yellow color for all of her hair. Runner B here, we've got some parts in white, and then Runner C as well, some more smaller parts in white. Runner D, we've got some flesh tone palm plastic for some joint parts, and then Runner E, some more flesh tone color parts here for the body, and the remainder of our flesh tone parts here on the F runner. Runner G is in this super dark brownish gray color for the parts that are kind of meant to look sort of black basically. And the same thing for Runner H here. Also, we've got two of this H runner, these parts also being in ABS plastic by the way. Runner I is in that same color, this is just the part for the base plate. Runner J is in this really cool lime green color for some parts for the joints and a couple little accents. Runner K here is also in dark brown but it's a little bit different from the dark brownish grayish color we saw before which was very much just like dark gray. This one is a little bit more brownish and I think 
think that's to simulate the color of like a little bit of like a flesh tone underneath these parts. Runner M is some parts for the weapon here in white. Runner N also parts of the weapon here, like the handle section is, is in just a standard gray color. Runner O, some more weapons parts here in a nice slightly purplish blue color. Runner P is some parts here in a nice molded kind of coppery gold color. And Runner Q is our clear green effect parts for that. Last but not least on Runner W here we have our parts for the wrist joints. So it should be pretty nice when it all comes together. I'm looking forward to seeing how this compares to like a standard Megami device kind of kit. Uh, well, I guess we'll find out here in just a minute. All right, so here she is all built up and standing, but I gotta say a little bit tricky to get her to stand up because she's a little bit top heavy on top of some very tiny little high heels down there. So uh, you're definitely probably going to want to use the included stand, but that's included and it's gonna be much better for doing any sort of posing or anything like that anyway. So most of the time you're probably not gonna be using her without the stand, I would say, but it was a really fun kit to build because of course it's very similar to other different Kurobukiya, Megami device and frame arms type kits, but different enough that it didn't feel like just building kind of the usual kit. It had of course similar elements, but there's enough different about this that that was still a pretty interesting build and it was a lot of fun. I think that it came out looking really, really nice. So let's go ahead and take a closer look at everything here in detail. So aside from the different hand and face options, which we already went through and you guys will see in use as we go through some posing options here, the main accessory is basically just going to be the stand. I was joking obviously, but of course if you guys have built any other frame arms kits or anything like that, this is a pretty standard base plate stand for this. It has a ball joint at the bottom. The top part is also attached via a ball joint. You can slide it up and down for different heights on there. Again, simple, but I find these to be perfectly effective for pretty much any kit. No, of course, this is going to be her main weapon here, and it does look really cool. I really like the blue, white, and gold color scheme for that, and then with those light green effect parts look really nice as well. Those are easy enough to just remove out of there, and then this folds up like that for storage on the back of her skirt. So we have this attachment piece that you'll use for this. This will plug onto here, and then you can plug this onto the back here. You need to lift up this kind of back cape part, and this plugs up in there onto her back. And that way you can still plug your base connector onto there for doing some sort of posing or whatever with this attached onto her back, like so. But you can also attach this onto her arm as well. You could just hold on to the handle here, here, or here, or something, however you might want. But for a little bit of extra stability, you have this connector piece here, which will plug onto there like that. And this will basically replace this part around here, like the cuff on her arm. You'll replace that and then that way you're holding onto this. Sorry, other way around. Let me just demonstrate this. So you put your hand onto the handle there like that. Plug on our hand and our new adapter piece. Get that all plugged in there. So then that is a nice and secure connection there for holding that. And you don't have any weight issues at all either, it would seem. This part here on the back of the elbow just went flying, but that's okay. It's just kind of stuck on there. Let's try this with the arm fully just extended out like that. And feels pretty solid. Not really gonna have any weight issues with that at all. So I think that's pretty good. I mean, and like I said, that's kind of it for your accessories. This other little part here just popped out. It's a little bit kind of tricky one. Just plugged in here above the shoulder. There, like that. Anyway, and then speaking of tricky parts too, you also wanna be really careful with that tiny little star piece there, because it's a tiny little piece and it, the manual recommends you to glue that in. I haven't glued mine in yet, but I will just note that you do have an extra one. They were kind enough to give you two of those, even though you only need one, in case you end up losing that or something because it's such a small piece. They give you an extra, so just make sure you hang on to that just in case you need it. And the articulation is pretty standard, but while we're here, let's just go over that. The hair is just on a ball joint connection and that will kind of ro rotate around and move up and down like that. So you can move the hair around in different ways for doing different action posing or whatever. The head is just on a ball joint at the base where that plugs into the neck and then it's on a hinge at the base where that plugs into the body. So you've got kind of a double joint here in the neck. The ball joint for the like where the neck plugs into the head is always a little bit tight on these. So you want to be a little bit careful but so ultimately you can bring the head up pretty far all the way to there and down all the way to there like that. So pretty good articulation there. The top and the bottom half of the body has a ball joint in between it too. So you can move that as a stomach crunch here forward and back like that and a little bit side to side and a little bit rotation there as well between the top and bottom half of the body. As you guys saw, this little white part there above the shoulder is on its own little ball joint there. These parts here on the side of the arm also can move a little bit in and out like that. You have rotation there at the top of the arm and then you have a bend at the elbow here that will give you uh, more than 90 degrees, but that is about it for that elbow bend. This part here on the back of the elbow also can rotate around. This kind of cape part here on the back can also lift up and down. 
It's because this skirt is all just kind of fixed. And it's gonna block you from being able to move the leg too far forward. You can see that's kind of like about it. But what you can do is you can pull that joint down, it drops down a little bit, and then that way you can get the leg a little bit farther forward. Still not really all that much, so you can also uh, rotate the leg there in the middle of the thigh. And you can bend the knee with a nice full double joint there. This part also moves a little bit, but that full joint there at the knee with the green joints is pretty cool. I like that. This part here on the front of the ankles is attached via a small little ball joint, so you can kind of move that around a little bit, but move it around too much and it's just gonna come off. So it's just kind of meant to be, it's kind of stuck on there. Feet will also rotate a little bit side to side a little bit like that. And again, there goes that piece popping off there. So just be a little bit careful with that. And then forward to about there, back to about there. So just a pretty standard joint type for this. And there you go, up on the underside of the feet. So pretty simple as far as the articulation goes, pretty standard for any sort of like Megami device, Frame Arms Girl kits. I feel it's probably not quite as good just because of the design of this and the limitations that I didn't talk about really, really the shoulder much, I guess the arm can go up to about there, about 90 degrees. It doesn't have the same kind of joint where you can move the shoulder forward like Megami device kits have, so it's basically just a ball joint there, so you can move it around a little bit, but not really a whole lot. So yeah, anyway, the articulation is pretty standard. It's not quite as nice as uh, some of the other Megami device kits and things like that, but, and for just for a quick size comparison here, she is with your standard Megami device kit and a standard HG kit there, 144 scale Gundam kit, so you can get a good size idea for this. But that is going to be about it here for the Stella Innocent version of Jean. I'm really looking forward to building up the Stella Tears version as well. Can't wait to see them both together, see how they compare and everything. But as far as just this version goes, I mean, just the kit in general, I really like it. It doesn't really come with a whole lot as far as like a bunch of different accessories or anything like that. But because of its compatibility with uh, Megami device stuff, I feel like there's probably a lot of options there. If you have any other extra weapons or things you want to do some kit bashing between this and any other Megami device kit, there's uh, lots of opportunities there for that. And it's pretty cool. Uh, one other thing too I just want to say about the just bodily proportions of this kit as well. I like it. I'm just glad that it's something different because uh, a lot of Megami device kits and Frame Arms Girl kits, they're all pretty much the same body type of very thin, very just small body, really thin frame. And so I don't really, I'm not really going to say one way or the other as far as like any personal preference for that. I'm just glad that it's something different for a change. So that's nice that uh, this one is a little bit more thick than usual. So that's good. So it's a pretty awesome kit with some nice color separation there. You do have some seam lines around here and there on the kit. But that's pretty standard. If you guys have built any of these kits before, you know, they, they have some seam lines around and especially on some of the limb areas. But overall, it's a pretty fun kit and I highly recommend it if you're a fan of Fantasy Star Online or even if you're not, so you just like this type of kit or something or you just like the, the look of this model. I think there's a lot of opportunity there to paint this up. You got the water slide decals included in there as well, which is pretty nice to have those included. So you can use those and it's a pretty great kit. So up next, we'll take a look at the Stella Tears version see how they compare. Going to be mostly pretty much the same, so it's just going to be kind of comparison, just a few pieces that are going to be basically different, but we'll take a look at that next. Thank you guys all so much for watching. Thank you USA Gundam Store as always for the support. If you guys want to check the link to USA Gundam Store down below, you can check out all the different Kodobuka kits, Bandai kits, everything else there. You can save 10% off everything there on the site using my coupon code ZAKORILIUS10, so check that out. And thank you guys for all your support too, whether it be commenting, subscribing, liking the video, all that. It's greatly appreciated. I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.